Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 31st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Sevalde, Germany. Xavier today wrote up a diary summarizing some of his recent experiences threat hunting and he produced some nice statistics really confirming what we have been seeing for the last year or so and others have been writing about as well. Crypto coin mining is probably the number one payload that you will see deployed via exploits. What's important to keep in mind here is that these payloads are really sort of what's used in more generic exploits, more widespread exploits. These are not targeted attacks. We do, however, see them being used very quickly after a new exploit is released. Uh, just to make the point here, the recent Struts vulnerability was exploited very quickly within a couple of days to deploy crypto coin mining. Miners. Whenever you see a crypto coin miner installed on a system via an exploit like this, well, uh, the exploit was really easy. So there is a good chance that a more targeted attack figured out the same vulnerability and did something more sinister to your system. So whenever you see that crypto coin miner, double check Take a quick look at the system. This may not be the only thing that happened to the system. But because crypto coin miners are rather easy to find, use them as a canary to really identify systems that have some blatant vulnerabilities left unpatched. And as far as the current Struts 2 vulnerability goes, that's CVE 2018-11776, which was patched on August 23rd. So about a week ago, Volexity, for example, is reporting about seeing active exploitation of this vulnerability to deploy crypto coin miners. As usual, these crypto coin miners will also try to delete competing miners. Now, they can't patch struts to for you. So they really rely on trying to infect your system often enough and kicking off competing miners. Wouldn't actually be surprised to find multiple miners on some of these systems just because they typically only clean a set list of processes that they consider miners. And Mimecast, a company that is providing email filtering services, released its latest quarterly email security stats. And well, uh, no surprise for a company that does provide cloud protection services for email, they found that on-premise email filtering systems often do let malicious emails pass through. I was actually a little bit surprised how well these on-premise systems worked in these tests they ran. They looked at 142 million emails that uh, were passed, at least for the most part, according to Mimecast, through Microsoft and Proofpoint servers. And they found that actually only 15,656 still had malware attachments attached to them. So that's kind of far less than 1%. And also they're saying that the overwhelming majority of these emails pass through Microsoft and Proofpoint. So they don't actually say that all of them passed through these email filtering systems. Microsoft, of course, has its own sort of cloud-based offering. That's the Exchange Online Protection. Not really sure how that would compare it against Mimecast, a more specialized solution. But I think uh, what's really sort of more important in this report is that really sort of the social engineering aspects of some of these emails, in particular targeted emails, are getting better. And that's really not captured in these uh, statistics where we're looking at millions of emails because that's usually only one or two emails that can cause quite a bit of damage and pretty much filtering doesn't do you much good in these cases. And then we got an interesting but not terribly serious vulnerability that was patched in 
Android, but only in Android Pie and Android 9, not in earlier versions of Android. This vulnerability really sort of affects the basic functionality of some of the APIs, which is why this particular fix was not applied to older versions. The problem here is privacy. Now, typically Android makes it difficult for user processes to figure out things like the MAC address of an interface or the BSSID of a Wi-Fi network that the system is connected to. This is mostly done because, well, uh, this can be used to identify a particular system or for geolocation in the case of the BSS ID of the Wi-Fi network. So in order to get that information, Android software usually has to ask for permissions, but Android also broadcasts that information to all all processes running on a particular Android system. So really that permission fix didn't really prevent malicious processes from obtaining the information. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.